The loving dog comment is actually an understatement. I'm like obsessively in love with dogs. So if you would like to talk about dogs, that's like my niche, where to, where to get me. Um, so he did a fabulous job of introducing me. So here's really just the same stuff he said. Also lead organizer for Kent Minneapolis this year, which is really exciting um, and is coming together quite well. So if you have a desire to come to Minneapolis, that, that's taking place in August. Same weekend as the opening state fair, so also another reason to come. Uh, so if you want to reach out to me, I, I would love for you if you share it on social. Obviously it helps the camp, it also helps me, it also helps other people see the content. Feel free to do so. Uh, TessaK22 is my handle pretty much everywhere you can possibly find me. Uh, and then use the official hashtag WCDET. Uh, so I want to talk through this scenario a little bit and why this is important and I'm sure a lot of you Depending on how many of you are developers just raise your hand. Okay, perfect good That's, you're, you're the audience. I need that will understand this uh, So a team of developers is working uh, that is already on a site that's already live and they're adding additional functionality So we've got multiple developers working on this uh, each developer is working in their own feature branch all likely needing uh, database to make database changes, right? We all know in WordPress a lot of things are controlled by the database, but there are a lot of things in code and kind of trying to manage all of that can be difficult. Uh, so content from the live environment needs to be tested against new features uh, being created. So we've got lots of content that's living in live, that client is continuing to add content, edit content, uh, but we're still trying to work with the database we have. Uh, and it needs to be it needs to be so that it's not overridden so we're gonna talk about and I'm gonna come back to this and I'm gonna give you some more foundation but what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about these three people they're fictional people uh, Joe Joanna and John are all going to work in different places uh, to do different tasks that we need them to do so Joe is going to actually edit some theme things he's gonna use the customizer customizer actually saves all of that data into your database uh, Joanna is going to edit our page cache plugin. Uh, the, the site is coincidentally on Pantheon, which, you know, I wonder why, but. Um, and then John is gonna set up a MailChimp plugin that they haven't been using before. And so all of these entail code changes as well as database changes. So before we start digging into the demo and Joe and John and Joanna and all the code changes they're making, let's talk about some of the basics. Uh, so what is site configuration? Has anyone worked with site configuration or configuration management before? Yeah, okay, cool. So site configuration really is the configuration of your site. So most of that configuration can be found in the WordPress settings. So if you've ever gone to the settings area, you change like the site name, the, the date format, the where the images are set, like all stuff like that. Uh, that's all your, your configuration of your site. So, uh, site configuration includes items that might also be uh, related to a plugin. So plugins have settings correlated to them. Uh, themes might have settings. Um, I think that's, that's probably about it. Um, and all of that stuff is configuration that you're actually setting up in your website. I just really like this little like meme. This is fun. Configuration everywhere. Right, so these developers that are gonna be working on these tasks, they're also doing configuration. Um, I don't remember which one, but one of them has to set up a MailChimp plugin. And there ha there's an API key that needs to go along with that MailChimp plugin. And so that's a configurable item. So we've got configuration. We know that we're constantly doing it. We're adding settings, we're changing things. Um, so what is configuration management? Has anyone ever worked with Drupal before that's in the room? No, okay. So Drupal 8 specifically is doing a fabulous job of configuration management and it's built into core. WordPress does not have that. Um, so configuration management is the act of managing your site configuration in code through version control. So basically, the things that we are doing to configure that MailChimp plugin, we convert that to something that's in code so that we can move that code from one environment to the other. So if we've got three developers working on something at the same time, if they're pushing that all to a code file, we can easily grab that because it's all in code and it's in our Git repository. Do we have enough configuration management? Probably not. <laughs> uh, so there's an awesome plugin that is called WPCFM. It is actually slightly outdated. 
Um, however, functionality in WordPress has not changed to require an update for that plugin. Uh, it's built by the awesome folks over at Forum One. Uh, I personally have a lot of, I, I love the plugin, I think it's awesome, that's why I'm talking to you about it. Um, and there's been initiatives around updating this plugin and contributing, so if you start to use this and you realize that this is amazing just like I did, uh, they're definitely looking for people and con contributors to really help maintain this plugin. Uh, currently, like I said, a lot of functionality hasn't changed, but with Gutenberg coming out, there may be some changes to some of the way that the settings um, could possibly be saved, uh, and there might be some opportunity to expand on it. All right, so the perks of WPCFM uh, are that there is the less need to copy the database. So we talked about these hypothetical developers, they're all working in different environments. If we can do their changes in code instead of in the database, we don't have to try to figure out how to merge databases together and how to make all of those changes work um, or overwrite any type of database situation with what they're doing. Uh, there's no need to manually apply database settings or changes. Like I just said, it's obviously all in code, so we can use, utilize that code to move it around. Uh, and then we can track and migrate configuration files. So the nice thing about this is if one person does a change and another person does a change, there's a version control to that. Like we, we all are probably, um, who, is everyone familiar with version control before I just make assumptions? Okay, awesome. Um, so we know that version control allows us to have a history to the things that we do. So if someone does some type of configuration and they break something, or maybe they do something that's not right, we can track back to like what happened, who did that, like, when was this done? Um, we can reverse it. All of that information that we may want to know about things that we're actually putting in our database, technically. Uh, so what can it track? I wish it could track everything, because that would be amazing. Um, but it can only track the things that are in the WP options table. So in the options table, they will store things like the general core settings. Uh, it'll also store things like the customizer, like I'd mentioned earlier, um, plugin settings. So as long as the plugin is built in a way that the settings that you enter are stored in the WP options table, which most of them are if they're built correctly, um, and those plugin settings will come along. Um, let's see, so I think that's, that's probably about it from like de default theme, some plugins. Uh, it will also do categories and tags, I believe, as well. So there's some terminology to this plugin. So once you install it and you decide that you want to use it, uh, it's actually pretty easy to figure out. Um, but some of the termi terminology behind that is a bundle. A bundle is a group of settings. So you can essentially go in there and say, I want to create a bundle, and maybe you put all of your theme settings inside of one bundle, which is really just like customizer and other customizer fields. Um, and then maybe you say, okay, cool, I know that I'm working on this MailChimp plugin. I'm going to create a bundle for my MailChimp plugin so that someone else who is working on another site can just pull in those configurations. Uh, and then only things that you check off for that bundle will actually get put in there for MailChimp. So I get to a very granular level when I'm doing it because I like to have, well A, I'm like slightly OCD, I'm pretty sure. But B, I like to have things like very organized and clean so I know that if I'm pulling in a bundle, if it's a new change or if it's a change from another developer, that I don't have to pull everything in and I can specifically pull in what I actually need. Uh, so pushing is the act of exporting your configuration to a JSON file. So you do some changes, you create your bundle, you check the things that you want in that bundle, and then you push it. And what that does is it pushes it to your server or your version, wherever it is that you're working. If you're working locally, it's going to create that file, and then you'll have that in your version control to be able to commit. Uh, and then pulling is the opposite. So pulling is you go into a new environment and you see that there are JSON files. You go in there, you can see all of the bundles that are in your, in your site files. Uh, and then you can pull in any of those bundles. And then when you pull it in, it'll basically say, okay, cool, do you want to make these changes to the database? And then you're like, yes, I do. And then it'll pull in all of those settings from your bundle. Do you have a question? Is this the Git push and pull? It is not the Git push and pull. So these are words that are inside of the, I'm actually gonna do a demo in a second, but they're actual buttons that are inside of the plugin. Um, but it, it's actually like similar to Git push and pull, obviously you're you know, pushing files and then pulling them in, um, but they're not the same. It's just writing it to a text file that you can then commit and then push and pull again. Yeah, yep. So it's writing it to a JSON file technically and then all of that is in there. And then the buttons are in the dashboard for you to push and pull. Um, so coming back to Joe, Joanna, and John, we're actually going to do a, a live demo because um, those never go wrong, of course. <laughs>
So we'll see how, how it goes. But okay, so what I've done is that if you're not familiar with Pantheon, uh, Pantheon has like this really nice environment set up. We've got like dev test and live and you can move stuff around. Um, but I, we also have this thing called a multi-dev, which I can pull things into like essentially what would be considered like feature branches. And so each one of these developers has their own environment to be able to work with and make changes. Um, so right now we're in, uh, let's see, I think we're in Joe's. I have to remember, I made all these fake people and then I forgot who was supposed to do what. Okay, so Joe is supposed to be working on a theme. So we just have the 2017 theme installed. I'm just gonna pop over to the customizer here and make like a quick change just so we have something different that we wanna push around. Um, so let's just change this to Joe's fancy website. We can go ahead and push that or publish that. So when we publish that, that actually created a change to the customizer. So in the database, this, what I put in there has now been pushed over to, um, to our database. And so now my database for Joe's site is gonna be different than John's and Joanna's at this point. All right, so we made a change. So to get into uh, WPCFM, we go to settings and then it shows up at the bottom of our settings. I know this is probably slightly small. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Is that better? Cool. So we're in WPCFM, and this is where those buttons were coming into play with the pushing and the pulling. So I'm gonna create a new bundle. Joe's job was to change the site name in the customizer. So we can say this one bundle is gonna be for theme. And then the only downfall to this plugin is that it, everything is like machine readable names. So you have to like decipher what those are. Um, so I actually know that the name of the site is called blog name in the database. And as you start to use this, you'll pick up on some of them. Uh, and in one of like the ending slides, there are like cheat sheets for which one maps to where. So we're gonna do blog name in there and then we'll just go ahead and save that. So in this bundle, we've got just the one thing checked off and it's the blog name. So if I push this, then what it just did when I clicked push is it created a JSON file for me of the code change I just made. So if we go back to the Pantheon dashboard for this site, which is this one, we can see that there is now, I'm gonna zoom in again, there's now a file change that is pending. Uh, and so down here, it created a config directory and then it put a theme.json file inside of that directory. So if we click on that, we can actually see in JSON format what we changed the blog name to. So now his changes are inside of a JSON and someone else can pull those in if they need to. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to, so these are in multi-dev, so that means that they're in like basically their own branch. So I'm actually going to merge this into our development, which is considered our master branch, so that the other developers can later pick this up. Because Joe is now done with his work. So I go back to dev, we can do a merge, if I'm in git mode anyways. Sorry, this just takes a second to get back into git mode. All right, cool. So Joe's changes are done. My mouse is being weird. All right, so we're gonna merge Joe's code into, actually wait, that's not gonna work yet because I didn't commit it. This is why live demos are not a great idea. All right, we'll come back to that one actually. Let's go work on John's. So John is supposed to be doing MailChimp. All right, so I already put, installed the, no, I didn't. You guys, I got my people confused already. All right, let's just look for a MailChimp plugin and add it. The idea here is to just get a bunch of changes so you can see what it looks like. Uh, I think it's one word. Cool. All right, so we got a new plugin. We're gonna go ahead and activate it. Obviously, when we activate a new plugin that's saved into our database, the plugin files are part of our code. Uh, so now if we go back down to settings, go to WPCFM again, we can create a bundle. And now this time we're not doing something that is actually a core feature. So we have to figure out like what database fields are mapped to this plugin. Um, so if we open ACF here again, we can see all of these different checkboxes. So again, I've gotten pretty familiar with what some of these stand for, but if you start to scroll down and maybe even do like a, a look at like the name, uh, this one is actually called MailChimp for WP. That's what the, the plugin name is called. Um, so as you start to get familiar, you'll, be, you'll get to, you'll start to realize like what these are. So if I check like all of the MC WP ones, I think that's all of them. Cool, 
Now I can go ahead and save that. And then I can push that bundle. And then again, if we go over to John's environment, this time we can actually commit it. So now there's 254 changes. A big chunk of that is obviously the plugin. But then we can also scroll down. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe it's at the way bottom. Nope. Way top. There we go. We can see that there is a JSON file that is now basically grabbing the, the configuration that is there by default. However, we want to change that configuration because we just installed it. We haven't added our API key. So if we go in and go to plugins, I go to MailChimp. Let's just put fake API. Can't type. Let's see if it'll let us do that. Oh, it says it returned an error, but it did save it. So let's see what happens if we go back. So if we go back to settings and we're like, okay, cool, we've made a change. We need to push that change to our bundle. So we go ahead, push the change to our bundle. We can go back to our environment for John. And there should be an update. Let's see what happens here. Open our pending files. Disappeared, where'd it go? Sorry, there's like a list of all these files, so I gotta find it. It's probably back at the top again. Here we go. Um, so it didn't actually save up API key. So I do need like a legitimate API key. But nonetheless, like, let's see. Let's see if I can come up with one. Nope, it won't let me. So we'll just call that good. All right, so we've got the settings there that we can go ahead and commit. So MailChimp, go and commit that. And then if we go over to Joanna, she's the last one. Joanna is working on the advanced page cache plugin. So if we go in, we actually install this. Sorry, I'll make that bigger again. We install the advanced page cache plugin. This is a plugin that works with Pantheon's like uh, awesome levels of caching and allows you to like configure that. So she's gonna go in, she installed the plugin. Uh, so we can go back and actually do her commit for installing the plugin. It'll be easier to see the files then. Install cache plugin. Cool, if we go back to her site now, if we go to settings, we can find the Pantheon page cache plugin, and then we can just change this to whatever we want. So let's just say we want our, our time to live for our cache to be 1200 seconds. We can go ahead and update that. And now if we go to WPCFM, we can create a new bundle again. This time it's for the page cache plugin. And then again, figure out exactly what this is called. And I don't remember off the top of my head what it was called. So let's try and figure it out. Pantheon Cache, there we go. Uh, so we check that, hit save changes, push it again, pop back into our environment. Cool, so we see a file change here. Created this file and we can see that at the time to live changed to 1200 seconds instead of the 600. All right, yeah. You definitely could. So you could just check all the boxes and say that you want to create everything. I, I just, I personally don't do that because then when you pull it in, you're pulling everything in. So if for some reason your developer decided that they wanted to tweak something just for their environment, then you'd be pulling in all of those changes too. So I'm pretty particular about which ones I include. Um, but you could, it's all in version control. So you could go back and fix things if you needed to. All right, awesome. So we've got everything in everyone's different environment. So we've got to change, wait, hold up. Uh, bundle for page cache. Go ahead and commit that. And then I'm gonna make sure everything else is committed. And then we can merge all of this into our master branch where we can pull all of this in, which is what makes it cool. All right, I think I committed that one. Let's see. This one does not have a bundle for it. Let's see what happened. Joe's was the customizer. Maybe I lost it. All right, so let's go back into Joe's site and just make sure that his changes are there. Push it. 
finish this. I don't think his bundle got committed. No, maybe it did. Oh yeah, I already merged it. Okay, so we're good. Uh, so I'm gonna merge the rest of these in. So Joanna's with the page cache. Man, I thought I did that. Sorry, y'all. Dev logistics. Okay, so we should be good now. So now we can merge in Joanna's. So what it's doing is it's basically doing a git merge of the file changes that we did, which is gonna be our JSON files and the plugin files. Dun, dun, dun. And then now we should be able to do John's once this is done. All right, so now we're gonna merge John's in. Uh, while that's actually merging, I'm gonna pop back over to my slides because I wanna make sure that there's not anything else I wanted to share. Uh, so while that's merging, essentially I have a step-by-step, -step, so I already shared these slides as long as Buffer did its job correctly on my Twitter account so you can find the slides. Um, but these are the steps to basically set it up. Install the plugin, add a bundle, put all the things that I walked through uh, just now. Um, and then some tips and tricks. So. As you saw, I was like digging through those fields to figure out which fields are correlated to like certain fields in the database. Uh, there are some tricks to do. So there's the options reference in the WordPress codex actually walks you through all of the core fields. Uh, and then you can also go to whatever your site name is uh, and go to like the WP admin obviously and then go backslash options.php and you'll get to visually see what all of the fields are in your database. So it'll show you like what you have for site name or it'll show you what you have for like something else. Uh, and sometimes that helps me figure out like exactly which one I want to see. Uh, and then, like I had here, create as many bundles as you want. Create one huge bundle. It's entirely up to you on how you want to do your workflow. Uh, major security consideration that I want to point out before we get back to the demo. Uh, this is put in the WP content folder, as we all know, is web accessible. And so it's going to create a config file or folder directory basically, and then it'll put all your JSONs in there. If you're putting things like API keys in there, like I was just trying to do, make sure that you lock down that file from a, like a readable standpoint so that others are not getting your like secure API keys. And then you can also do some configuration if you wanted to move where that is located as well. Uh, so WPCLI, if, has anyone used WPCLI? No, awesome, you, you all should be, because it's amazing. Uh, so it's a command line tool for WordPress, and it'll specifically do tasks inside of your WordPress site for you through command line. Uh, and there actually are a lot of commands for it, so you can do the pulling and the pushing, uh, you can check the differences, uh, you can look at your list of bundles. The only thing you can't do with command line is actually uh, create a new bundle. Obviously that takes some intensity to check all the boxes off. Uh, but if you're trying to do like a more automated script with your WordPress pro like process, you could do things like pulling uh, if you were doing kind of like a project deployment or whatever. Uh, you can include this into that automated deployment. Uh, and then cheat sheets. So I'm not actually going to walk through all of the cheat sheets because you don't need them, but if you want to use this, you can use them in my slide deck. So we only have like five minutes left. We're getting close to five minutes. So if we pop into uh, my new site now, or my master branch, essentially all of our developers did their work, and then we went ahead and we merged all of that into master. If I go into settings, actually I have to uh, turn this on first. So activating it. If I go into settings here, go to WPCFM, we can actually see the two bundles. I must have somehow screwed up the last bundle. That happens. Um, so what we can do now is we can either individually pull each bundle or we could actually just pull all the bundles in. So if I go ahead and do a pull here, it's going to say, do you want to import these settings to your database? I'm going to say, yep, I sure do. Uh, now if I were to go over to, let's say the page cache one came through, so let's check that out. So if we go into the page cache, we can see that the 1200 seconds carried over instead of the default of 600 seconds. Does anyone have questions on that? It is sweet. It's like amazing. I, I missed part of it though. This, this doesn't only work with Pantheon. This works with totally. other yeah. stuff as well. Um, she showed a lot of Pantheon stuff, so I, I use it with Pantheon and other environments. Yeah, absolutely. I'm only using Pantheon because like they have this nice dashboard that's really easy to show you that I'm doing different environments. It is by no means like a sales or selling point for Pantheon. It is usable like everywhere you possibly want to use it. Uh, cool. I'm going to replay these and make sure I don't have any like ending slides. 
Um, but for the most part, these are all cheat sheets. So it's walking through like what it, what it actually is in WordPress and what the field is in the database uh, for you to kind of kick off your use with this plugin. Um, I think that that's, let's see, let me, I'll be, oh, uh, let's see. This, so this other one, this last one I just had here, oops, I keep doing too many buttons. Uh, nope, we already did that. So there is also a way for you to customize this. So if you're a plugin developer, you can actually do some configuration of creating your own uh, fields for this. So if you're building out a plugin and maybe you're not storing things in the options table, but you want to store things in a WPCFM bundle, there's actually a custom way for you to go ahead and do that. And then you can find that all on their documentation site. Uh, helpful resources at Pantheon. We like support anything that makes your workflow easier, which this obviously does that. So we've got a couple docs uh, that we've shared. You can also hit up uh, Forum One. Those are the developers of the plugin. Um, and then some other things I wanted to point out is if, has, how many of you use advanced custom fields? Okay, quite a few of you. Has anyone like set up the synchronized JSON so your like, field groups automatically go into a JSON file? No, well you should because it's amazing. So it's the same concept. <laughs> it's the same concept as this. Like if you're creating field groups, it'll automatically put your field groups in a JSON file. And then if you like say that you inherit a project and another developer's like, here you go, I'm done with it. Or like maybe you're just picking up because they've set up some things. It'll put all the groups in there and you literally just hit sync and it brings all the field groups in from your JSON file. Uh, so anyway, so that's another, like, another way to use uh, basically putting configuration inside of code. Uh, that's all I have, but I, if we have like a minute or two, I think for questions, I think you had a question. Yeah, so content is tricky. Um, I actually just re f like figured out that this, there's a plugin called MergeBot, and I have not used it yet, but I was hoping to get time to use it this week because that's always a question that I get is like, this is awesome for like the configuration and whatever, but how do I do this with content? And it looks like MergeBot is doing just that. Um, it's actually on my, my list of things to do this next week. So if I make any like progress on that, I can share it on Twitter, um, but feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, but that is supposed to be version controlling for your entire database. And so that would obviously play to content and some of the other stuff. And it's really, it looks really cool because you can actually do like selective bringing in. So if you're trying to put two databases together, it kind of lets you go through and like check the things you want. Um, it has a, a pretty price point to it, but if it's worth it, I think that that would be, it's an amazing resource if it, if it does what I think it's going to do. Um, so that's the short link. Again, the slides and the short link to give me feedback are both on my Twitter account. And so I'm TessaK22 on Twitter. Uh, so feel free to download them, use them, share them, whatever. Um, and if you have comments or feedback, I would love if you'd provide that. <laughs>